Hello Tulanians, I'm David Kahn. And I'm Megan Tinsley. And welcome to the first episode of the Tulane Sports Minute. First, let's head to the gridiron to check on the Tulane Green Wave football team. And here we go. Tulane Green Wave versus North Texas Mean Green in Tulane's homecoming game. Quarterback Nick Montana came out and had a decent effort today for the Green Wave, throwing 18 for 28 with 132 passing yards and averaging 4.7 yards per pass, giving him a quarterback rating of 47.2. Montana's day culminated in the second quarter when he led a fantastic drive for the Green Wave, finishing it off with a nice touchdown pass to Justin Shackelford to help put the Green Wave on the board first, giving them a 7-0 lead. And now we have probably the biggest play of the game right here. Derek Scherger comes in and blocks a field goal and runs it back for 62 yards for a touchdown. This is the first time that Tulane has ever blocked a field goal and returned it for a touchdown in 119 years of school history. Continuing to build their lead in the third quarter, Lorenzo Doss picked off North Texas quarterback and ran it back 59 yards for a touchdown, giving the Green Wave a then what seemed convincing lead of 21-7. Finally, Cairo Santos topped out the Green Wave's great game with a 27-yard game-winning field goal, the first of his career, giving the Green Wave a 24-21 victory. Let's take a listen to the reaction. from homecoming against East Carolina and even without Nick Montana's QB managed to pull out a win against probably their toughest com opponent of the year. Defense was the name of the game in this one as Tulane held ECU to field goal several times in the red zone and didn't allow a TD until the final three minutes of the game which tied it. After ECU missed a game winning field goal with three seconds left the game went into overtime. In overtime the offense came alive with Tulane and ECU each scoring two touchdowns Two lanes both going to Ryan Grant. In the third overtime, ECU's kicker Warren Harvey missed his second field goal of the day, allowing Cairo Santos to work his magic again, nailing a 42-yarder on two lanes first play of the third possession to win the game and give Cairo his second game-winning field goal in as many games. Now, David, Tulane certainly seems to be on a roll here with their record of 5-2 and two and 3-0 and oh in the Conference USA. Where do you see the Green Wave finishing the season? Well, looking at Tulane's remaining schedule, I can see at least three more wins coming for the Green Wave, possibly four, with four of their five remaining games in their schedule coming against teams with losing records. The only game that seems to be giving this team any trouble is the last game of their season when they go to Texas to play Rice. But this team is definitely going to go far in my mind and definitely going to a bowl game this year. First time since 2002 that's happened. Curtis Johnson and the coach staff have done a phenomenal job of working with what they have, injury-wise and the like, and making Tulane look like a real contender this year. Hats off to the Green Wave coaching staff and their team. Also, to quickly update everyone on Nick Montana's injury status, it seems very likely he'll be back for Tulane's next game against Tulsa on October 26th. Now we move to an update on one Tulane team that has certainly exceeded the expectations of anyone this year. That's right, David. Tulane Volleyball is 18-2 on the year, 4-1 in Conference USA, and looking to be a serious contender this year. They haven't lost on the road yet. They have nine games left on the season, all of them in conference, and then they head to conference tournament in Tennessee, where they could potentially hold up for the number one seed. Some of the top players on this season for volleyball are freshman Tia Jurek, junior Anna Ruck, and seniors Mel Mandelbaum and Grace Weaver. Thanks, Megan. Those girls do look primed for a great postseason run. For an update on Tulane Cross Country, we go to Tulane SID Curtis Akey. We have him on the phone live now. Curtis? Thanks, David. Uh, yeah, the uh, uh, Tulane cross country program is is off to a pretty good start this season. We um, uh, started the season over uh, across town at, at UNO. And we got wins over uh, the UNO Privateers, um, uh, Nickel State, as well as Southeastern Louisiana. Had a week off and then uh, headed over to South Alabama for the uh, uh, Azalea City Classic, which we ran in last year. Um, the, the men's team placed third uh, that day behind Adam Yohannan's uh, spectacular run, uh, and the women came in sixth. But the, the highlight so far this year uh, was at the McNeese Invitational on uh, September 28th. Uh, the women came in first place uh, at that meet, which was the first time that the, uh, the uh, women had won a, a, a meet since uh, 2010, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, so that was a pretty impressive thing. Uh, Paige Callahan came in fourth place. She had missed the uh, previous week uh, or the previous uh, meet over at South Alabama. So she came back really strong, came in fourth place. Um, 
Got some freshmen on the squad this year on the women's side uh, in, in Catherine Smiley and, and Sarah Kabidi uh, and also Allison Wegner. But Catherine and Sarah have, have done a tremendous job so far this season uh, at that McNeese Invitational. Catherine placed sixth and Sarah came in eighth. And then uh, Michaela Sonneborn, who's a sophomore, has done uh, a fantastic job for us this season, as has uh, Callie Turlington, who is the lone senior on the squad. Um, on the men's side, um, uh, at that McNeese Invitational, uh, the men's squad came in, I um, believe, 10th, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, actually, no, they came in 6th. And um, Adam Johanna once again, led the pack. Jack White's put together a pretty good season. Jeff Zellick uh, has also uh, come on as the uh, lone upperclassman on the squad this year, but the the women have really been uh, very impressive so far. Like I said, that that one uh, match or, or rather meet that they won over at McNeese, and then uh, this Friday actually will be their next uh, competition where they uh, head back to Alabama, but they're going up to Tuscaloosa to compete in the uh, Crimson Classic, which will be held on uh, Friday, October 18th. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, after the Crimson Classic comes a uh, conference. So. Season uh, has come and gone pretty quickly, but uh, I think I think Coach Eric Peterson's been very impressed with what he's seen out of the women's side so far. Finally, as a recurring segment here on the Two Lane Sports Minute, we're going to be asking a Two Lane Sports trivia question every week. If you know the answer, please go to the comment section of this video and comment your answer. We will reveal it on the next episode. Today's trivia question is: When was the last time the Greenway football team went to a bowl game, and what bowl game was it? Well, I think that about wraps it up for us on the Tulane Sports Minute. It certainly does, Megan. Until next time, Green Wave fans, roll wave.